Artist Jacqueline Barnett is having a strong year so far. Two exhibits plus a beautiful hardbound book about her work and her life. And the driving force behind much of this activity is independent art critic and curator Matthew Kangas. Hi. Hi, Matthew. Hi. All right, you've written 15 books on individual artists. Uh, why Jacqueline Barnett? Why now? Um, I've been following her work since 1987, and a couple of years ago, I called her, I, went, I said, can I come, I want to look at some more of your work, and it took like six months to go through the racks and see everything, and then at that point I thought, well, why don't we do a book? Wow. And you know, the normal way that people get books is like, they line up a museum show, mm -hmm. and then the museum backs the book, and, but you know, in my career in Seattle, I sort of got tired of waiting for the museums to get on board. <laughs> and so I came up with this idea. Yeah, well, I came up with this idea. The book will attract the shows. Uh, That's exactly what happened. And it's exactly what happened. So pick, if you can, one painting <laughs> in the Gallery IMA um, exhibit and walk me through it, one that you kind of stands out for you. Well, the newest one that you see when you come right in, in, into the gallery, Blue Fortress. It looks uh, first like just a jumble of red, yellow, blue, and green lines that are painted, you know, on a eight foot tall canvas, but then you see it's like a shoulders and a neck of a human torso. Uh, so it could be it could be a figure, but you don't know whether it's male or female, but with the colors and the animated brushwork and everything, it's got a vibrating, pulsing vitality to it that I just love. Yeah. It's so there's so much paint too. It just yeah. like, you know. Um, so um, in that gallery IMA show, there is a painting which I love from 1960 called Geraniums. This is uh, very early on. Earliest. Very earliest. So it's it's very different from the rest of the work. But is there a relationship between that piece and what was to come? Well, it's red and green, which is what your two of her favorite colors. Her use of color is amazing to me because they're you know primary colors, and these are not decorative, uh, matchy matchy. Uh, comfortable no. uh, colors, but um, she brought so much bright color from San Francisco when she moved up here mm -hmm. that that's one of her influences on Northwest art, mm -hmm. getting getting us out of the misty cloud, misty mountain school. You yeah, know. yeah. Uh, yeah, she, her, her work demands attention. You don't just kind of let it wash over you. You can't just walk by it. You can't. Um, so um, in, in, in 2000, uh, Jacqueline lost uh, two grandchildren and, her, uh, and their father in the crash of Alaska Airlines Flight 261. Um, would you talk a little bit about how she responded artistically to that devastating loss? Well, at first she couldn't do anything, mm -hmm. and she couldn't go to the studio for months. But uh, because she was so disciplined and used to going back into that studio every single day, when she got back in there, she found herself kind of expressing her mm -hmm. angst and, and grief in paintings that she realized were kind of reflecting the whole thing, not not literally, but that to me when I saw them, it made me kind of prove my my secret theory that abstract art can convey any kind of subject matter. You see these circles within circles in some of the paintings, it's a nose cone of the plane. Mm. Oh, or man. you see a V shape and it's called impact. It's like hitting the, mm. you know, because it went out to the Pacific Ocean and yes. everyone was lost. And there's another one called Together, and it's two long oval shapes. It's like the two grandchildren are mm. bound together. They're falling through the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Which you write about really beautifully in the Thank book. You. Um, do you think she's uh, appreciated as she should be? No. Really? No. I don't want to say I favor under the underdog artist for some of the choices of who I write about. But because I, believe it or not, I think of myself as an underdog critic, hmm. you know. I've always been on the margins, on the outside, and yet I've been able to yeah. push myself to the center, <laughs> to the top, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I admire artists who keep working, who don't necessarily um, get the recognition, and mm -hmm. then you wonder why. You know, the other thing is, gee, otherwise we're stuck with the artists that the museums choose to anoint. Right, right. You know, well, that's one form of establishment that, Yeah, this is one avenue, right. Yeah, but not the whole story. I mean, thank heavens we have museums like the Museum of Northwest Art and mm -hmm. the Tacoma Art Museum that are committing to showing Northwest Lo artists. Local, yeah. Well, you've done a good thing here, and you definitely want to check out all the stuff that's going on about Jacqueline. First of all, Jacqueline Barnett Early and New Works runs through January 30th at Gallery IMA in Pioneer Square. Um, Apasionada 
The Art of Jacqueline Barnett, 1990 to 2015, runs through March 17th at the Museum of Northwest Art in LaConnor. And finally, the book, you got to pick it up, A Figure to Feel, The Art of Jacqueline Barnett. It's available at both of the exhibits and I think online too. And right? printed in Italy. And it's been, it was printed in Italy. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Nancy. Seattle loves you. <laughs>